uh, thank you very much for being part of the Triptico Early Access Group. Sorry it's taken me a little while to uh, to get in touch, but uh, I've been busy um, creating this um, new uh, web version of Triptico. So we've got all the resources uh, now available via the browser, or most of the resources. I've still got a couple more to do, but hopefully there's enough for you to be able to begin experimenting with. Um, it's very much a work in progress, so if you've got any feedback, uh, any questions, or if you find any little bugs or anything like that, then, then get in touch and I'll, I'll try my best to uh, to fix those or to uh, respond to any feedback and so on. I thought I'd just put together a, a really quick video um, just to introduce this, this new site. It's pretty simple. Um, just show you some of the things that you might like to have a little look at, uh, introduce some of the new features and uh, a couple of new resources that have been um, added. So uh, the good news is anything that you've created with the app and anything that you continue to create with the app will be available um, via this website and vice versa. Anything you create with the website will be available via the app. But hopefully having everything accessible via the browser again will be much easier. There's nothing to install, nothing to download, nothing to update. Um, you just visit the website, uh, sign in and uh, away you go. Um, so, okay. Uh, first thing I'll show you, I'll move this out of the way for now. The first thing I'll show you is this, uh, I have a code button. Uh, so you may have noticed when you have been creating activities with the app that each uh, saved file has its own unique code. Uh, so you can give this to students and they would visit this website. They'd have the code, so I've scribbled down an example. I've got one which is just the months of the year um, in English and the months of the year in German. That code number is 16201. So I could tell my students just to come and visit this website, click the I have a code button type in the code for the activity which is 16201 submit the code and they can choose which resource they'd like to open it with so let's open it with cardboard which will convert the months of the year into these little cards which we can use to revise from we'll give them a little shuffle so they don't come up in uh, in the correct order we'll deal all 12 out at once And so there we go. And it's the same as the, the app. You tap the middle of a card to zoom it in and out, tap the edge to flip it over. You can also tap this clear button. It'll just take all the cards off the screen. Uh, or if you just want to deal the same number again, you can just click this again button. So if you just want to deal one at a time, um, you can just keep doing that rather than have to keep going back to the main uh, screen. Um, so again, tap to the edge. We can flip these over. The students could flip them over if they think they know the month and, and check if they were correct. We can also zoom in. Flip, etc. Um, so that's how students would use the um, the code. They could also open it with a different resource, so they could open it with Bingo if they wanted to, and they could do this in their own time uh, at home. Uh, or if you wanted different students working on different things within your classroom, um, then they can do this as well. And it will work on tablets and phones and computers, etc. So um, it should be nice and, and versatile, um, so the students can just start using the activity there game of bingo. One other thing with the codes that's worth knowing, if you give the student a code like this, they'll click submit and they can choose which resource they want to open it with. If you want to specify a resource that it opens with, you would just add the first two letters of that resource to the code. So if I was to type in BI for bingo, then this resource will automatically open with bingo. So I won't get the, the choice of um, resources, it'll automatically open with bingo. The other thing you could do as well, I suppose, I'll move this down you'll see we get this URL so you could even just share this URL uh, with the students if you were uh, posting something via email or putting something on a, uh, a shared area or something like that then that's another way that you could do it um, everything's much easier again you can just um, let's have a little thing so you could even just change the bingo to cardboard and there we go so it's open with the cardboard so there's lots of different options for sharing resources but hopefully this code idea I'll go back uh, whoops will be the most straightforward so again if I want to open it with cardboard CA for cardboard 16201 and that automatically opens it with cardboard so that's how you would share hopefully much easier um, or really easy uh, to share anything again students can do that they don't have to sign in they don't have to create an account they don't have to submit any sort of details anything like that they can just uh, use the code to access the activity that you want them to to use. I've also put on here try an activity button so if you've got colleagues who haven't seen Triptico and you'd like to introduce it to them this might be a good way to to do that. 
I've just tried to put some ideas for how you can use the different resources for a few different subjects down here. So a few things that are applicable to all subjects, so a selector just to randomly select names. Uh, we'll put the sound on, so you would just pull down. So this will just randomly select students from the class. Or it could be selecting keywords, it could be selecting vocabulary that I want them to um, to learn or to uh, words that I'd like them to define or whatever. It's completely up to you how you use these uh, resources. A few different things, things for early years, a find 10 activity, can you find the things that begin with B? So the students would identify the different things. You can click the information and tell them that that's bread, etc. So that hopefully be quite uh, helpful to maybe even for you just to sort of get used to the new resources, how they work. You can just work through a few of these different things and um, and learn about them in that way. Okay, um, so those are the sort of two um, buttons that we've got on the screen. The main thing you'll probably want to do is to sign in. So you just click the sign in button. Your current Triptico username and password will work. You don't need to set up a new account. So I will sign in. You'll see when you sign in your saved files. So these are all the files that I've created. Um, either using the app or using this um, new website. So you can see I've got 289 different files. I can scroll down through them. Um, so this is displaying the first 30. I can click um, and view the rest. I can also use the search bar. So if I wanted to search for a Romeo and Juliet activity, I can just type Romeo and this will filter those uh, the relevant files for me. Um, once I've found um, the file that I want to use, you can see I've got the code there, 16200 would be this one, Juliet, who is to blame. You can click on the code and it'll tell you a little bit about what I explained, about how you can share it. So if I wanted to open it with word magnets, I'd just type WO 16200. If I wanted to open it with a spinner, it would be SP 16200, etc. Uh, as I've signed in, I don't need to, uh, to use the code. I can just click the play button. Um, this one I thought would be useful for order sorter activities, the students have to decide who's most to blame for the death of Juliet as we study the play. Uh, could blame Juliet, I suppose. Um, so there we go, so we can move that around. So you can have all the students working independently on this and then you can all sort of come together to uh, share your ideas or students working in pairs or smaller groups or you could have this displayed on the board at the front and you could ask students to come and move characters and then justify their, um, their choices, etc. Uh, as ever, you know, it's completely up to you. Uh, how you use these um, resources. This at the moment is set as public, so this means that if I was to, to share this code, then other people would be able to access it. If I didn't want anybody else to access it, for whatever reason, maybe I didn't want them to access it until after I'd uh, used it in the lesson, you can just tap and that's no longer public, so that's private. So if anyone was to type in the code 16200, it would just say this file is not available. I can tap to make it public again, and now other people will be able to use it. You can also set them as favourites, set these uh, resources as favourites. The play button gives me the options about uh, opening it. I click the little pen to edit it, and I would just click this cross. If I wanted to delete a file, then I can do that as well. Uh, I don't want to delete this one. Uh, we'll keep it there. So uh, I'll show you very quickly as well a new uh, resource, which might be useful for language teachers. So I've got this very simple uh, list. It's just a list of the months in English and a list of the months in German. If I click to edit it, I'll be able to show you. So I've just got in column one the months of the year in German, and in column two I've got the months of the year in English. So that's all it is, just very simple. Um, and what I can do with this new resource, so we click to play, and the new resource is called Listen. So this resource will actually speak your list to you. So I'll click to open the resource. Remember, it's just a very simple list of um, the months of the year. Choose the, the voice that's going to work best for your particular list. So if it was the months of the year in French, then I would choose the French one, etc. It's got Japanese. Because I'm using Google Chrome, I get all the Google options as well. And then you get all these. So there's lots of different languages for people to experiment with. We'll stick with this Google, um, the German, Google German for now. Click OK. So I get the month of the year in English there, then I have to listen. Uh, for the for the month in German. September, May, August, März. So if I thought it was this one, I can click. Um, so I'll be interested to uh, hear what people think about that. Um, 
hopefully a, a, an interesting new addition. Again, it, there's no audio in the actual file. It just sort of takes that list and, and speaks the, the months for me. Um, so, okay, um, that's probably everything for uh, your save files. You also got the bonus resources. So if you've used these in the in the app, you've got things like the scoreboard, the flip timer, etc. So they're all there for you as well. Just a little thank you for supporting Triptico. Um, so they're my saves. We've also got the global saves. So these are uh, files that other people have created. So if I was just to do a little search for Spanish, then this will find or has found 233 different activities uh, which match that keyword of Spanish. Um, so these are files which other people have created and which they've set as public. I can't delete these files because it's not mine to delete. I can't change whether it's public or private, but I can um, launch it and I can edit it. If I wanted to customize it, tweak it a little bit to suit my students, then I can do that too. So they're the global saves, so we can search the global database of all the um, public activities. And also, if, you've used the, if you use the old website, then you may well have some legacy saves. So I've got lots of different things in here, uh, lots of files that people sent me, all sorts of different things. So I've got 624 um, legacy saves. Um, and again, you can just go through, which one would be a good example? Let's try this one, um, year 11 weather. I'm not entirely sure what it is. Um, let's have a game of bingo with it. So you can see we get the different, um, whatever it would be, statements or words. Um, and then we can have a game of bingo. I'm not the best example for bingo, but you'll know if you've created your resource, um, if you create the activity, which resources you would open it with. So all your um, legacy saves are there. You notice they don't have a code. Uh, that's because they're still saved on the old database. So if you wanted to bring it across to the new database, all you would do is click to edit it, uh, check everything's okay because some things sort of convert better than others so just have a little check of all the data if I click this one so I can see if I'm happy with um, this one other thing you might notice I don't know if this is just a Mac issue um, but the scroll bar isn't great on this for some reason but if you use this sort of up and down arrow that brings up the scroll bar and then you can move things up and down or you can just use the up and down arrow to to move backwards and forwards or when you're creating just hitting the tab button will move you to the, the different things and I'll investigate why this scroll bar seems a little bit um, troublesome uh, maybe just a Mac thing as I say again it'd be interesting to hear if people have any other uh, feedback about that but anyway you can sort of move up and down in that way and um, so yeah if I was happy with that I could click to save it and that will save a copy to the to the new database um, so yeah so your saves your global saves uh, your legacy saves if you've got them from the old website the codes the file name I need to add a bit of information here you can click and, and see when it was uh, created I just need to add the sort of information how many columns it's got how many rows but I'll keep I'll keep working on this while you're sort of using it and updating it um, okay um, so to create a file we just click the create button starts off just with three um, rows but you can add as many rows as you like so if we were to have, say if we're doing making the months of the year, we might have our 12 uh, rows. So we could start typing in English, January, February, etc. If I wanted to add the, uh, an extra column, maybe with these months in a different language, then I can do that. So I could start typing the other language in here. Or this could be a sum, so it could be 1 plus 7 equals, and I put the answer to the sum in there. Uh, it could be questions and answers, it could be uh, words and definitions, it could be uh, whatever you want. Students' names and a little task that they, you know, for them to complete when they're randomly chosen by the spinner. Whatever you want to do is completely up to you. If you want to add images, just put it back to one column for now, and you would just uh, check the little image box and then you can click to add an image. If you want to make it a true or false activity, so you want to use it with find them, where you might perhaps have an activity with the title find the 10 countries in Europe um, and then we might start with Spain Oops, put S. and we mark that one as true because that is a country in Europe we might put uh, USA and we'll keep that as false because that isn't um, so if it's a true or false activity then you just check that little box there and you just need to make sure that you um, just mark whether the answer is true or false um, 
yeah, so hopefully that's all straightforward enough, all fairly similar to how you would do things with the app. If you're perfectly happy using the app to create activities, if you've sort of got used to that and you prefer it, then just carry on using the app to create activities or use, you know, whichever whichever you like. But anything you create with the app and save will be instantly available via the website. So you can do whichever you feel uh, happiest with. When you've completed your list, um, you just click to save it. You give it a file name. So let's say if we just called it countries in Europe, you can add tags in the same way that you can in the um, in the app just to help you find these things again. So if this was a geography activity, I can add the little geography tag. I may add something like world, um, whatever. Um, so these things, when I search the database again in the future, um, these tags will help me to find this particular activity. You can set it as public or private, whichever you like. Again, you've seen how easy it is to sort of uh, change that from the file list. So if I was to set this one as private for now, because it's, it's not particularly helpful to anybody. I click to save it, and there we go. It says file saved successfully. So now if I go back to my save files, I've got this file countries in Europe. It has its own little code. Um, and I could open it, but there's actually no data in there, so I'll just delete it. So that file is now deleted. Um, okay, one last thing that might be uh, worth knowing. If you click the My Account button, I haven't added too much here. I've got to add a little bit more uh, information. But one thing that I've added is this <coughs> preferred font. So you might have seen when I've been opening activities, it's been opening with this sort of comic uh, font. So let's see if I'll find an example. Um, let's have a look. Just days of the week, a nice simple one. Let's open it with a spinner, let's say. So you can see I've got this sort of comic uh, font, which might be nice for a primary teacher, perhaps. It's sort of got the, the letters formed in a, in a nice way for students to see. Um, but you can go back to your account, and if you click to change the font, I've just used Google Fonts, so you can click to view the Google Font page, and you can choose whichever Google Font you like. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different things. If you're teaching a particular language, you may like to, say if you're teaching Chinese, uh, then you might like to do that. This will show you the Google fonts that will work best with Chinese. Um, uh, so let's have a little look. So we'll just find one. There's hundreds, as I say, hundreds and hundreds of different um, fonts. You can choose whichever one you like the best. Um, uh, let's go with, let me see, let me see. Uh, let's try, let's just try this one. So Newton. N -E -U -T -O -N. So if I was to go back to my Triptico account, I can click to change it to that font. You can see it changes to reflect the, the font. And so now all my activities will open with this font. So if I was to reload this, you can see it's got this uh, different font. So you can choose whichever font sort of works best for you and your students or whichever font works best for the language that you are um, teaching. Um, so hopefully that's uh, something that will be helpful as well. Um, if a student opens the activity, it'll, it'll revert back to the sort of default font, but I'm hoping to update that soon. So if someone opens an activity that you've created, it will open in your preferred font. So if you've used a, a, a sort of comic or handwritten font, um, then your students will see that handwritten font too. At the moment they won't, but I'm, I'm sort of working on that, and that uh, should be done hopefully fairly soon. Um, so hopefully that uh, gives you a nice little... Um, introduction um, to the new site um, lots for you to experiment with as I say get in touch if you've got any feedback any questions any comments anything like that uh, any little bugs any suggestions for how it could be improved um, then let me know it's still as I say very much a work in progress It'd be nice to sort of keep working and keep updating it and, and keep adding new features I've still got a few resources to add um, but as I say a few of the sort of more popular ones especially lots of people have asked me about connections which seems to be a really popular resource, so um, that's in there now. So if I was to just click the simple example, I can open that with connections. Um, so that's there. There's a slightly different process for creating a connections activity. I've created a, a blog post, which I'll, I'll share as well, and show you how to do that. But any connections activities that you've created in the past should instantly work um, with this. So the idea is you just find that four different categories then you can click and it tells you they're a cat um, all planets etc um, I don't know if there's any more um, 
new activities, um, but uh, new resources. Sorry, but uh, feel free to have a little um, experiment with them all. I need to add the preview data, so I'm going to. That's the sort of job that I'm going to do um, next. So that will allow you to remove certain rows if you was a class list and you had a couple of students who were absent. Um, then that would allow you to do that um, and also to switch the columns can be quite handy to be able to if you've got like my example with the months of the year in German and English to be able to switch those so perhaps um, on one spinner have the months in German and on another spinner have the months in English so I need to add that but I'll be coming soon um, okay so uh, again thank you very much for supporting Triptico thanks for being patient whilst I um, work on all these different things uh, thanks as ever for for all the the feedback that I get it's really um, helpful and really appreciated um, and I hope um, you like exploring this this new website um, thanks very much